Welcome back to Fairies to Twirls. Now, in today's episode, we're still on section 4, which is entitled Food Science and Technology. But in today's session, we'll be looking at content 3, which is entitled Perishable and Non-Perishable Foods. Stay tuned. Section 4 Food Science and Technology. And in today's session, we'll be looking at content 3, which is entitled Perishable and Non Perishable Foods. Now, let us look at the focus points. So, we'll be looking at definition of key concepts, types of perishable and non perishable foods, and also we'll be exploring the relationship between water activity and food spoilage. Now, what are perishable foods and non-perishable foods? Now, let us look at some context clues. Now, if you are able, your prior knowledge should tell you what the definition of perishable is, right? What is perishable? Now, when we apply it in the context of food and nutrition, what are perishable foods and non-perishable foods let us see if you were thinking on the right path now perishable foods are those likely to spoil decay or become unsafe to consume if kept at refrigerated at 40 degrees fahrenheit or 4.4 degrees celsius or below or frozen at 0 degrees Fahrenheit or 17.8 degrees Celsius or below, right? Now, examples of those foods are what? What are some foods that you purchase that cannot stay at room temperature? Or we may say they cannot stay in the temperature danger zone, right? These include milk and milk products, meat and poultry, seafood, cooked foods and leftovers, and also fruits and vegetables. Now, non-perishable foods, on the other hand, are items that are typically commercial foods that have long shelf lives. That mean what? They take a long time to go bad, they do not spoil or go bad unless the package is opened or punctured. Non-perishable foods don't require refrigeration. Examples of non-perishable foods are canned foods, dried fruits, powdered milk, rice, pasta, oatmeal, breakfast cereals, flour, and also spices. And these foods can be left out in the temperature danger zone. They don't have to be refrigerated. Good? Now, what is water activity in food? Hmm, have you ever heard that term before or that phrase? Water activity in food? What do you think that it is? Take a clue with the watermelon. Does watermelon have a lot of water activity? What would you say water activity is? Now, water in food which is not bound to food molecules can support the growth of bacteria, yeast, and molds, right? And these are the microorganisms that contaminate food. The term water activity refers to unbound water. Now, water that can be extracted easily from foods by squeezing or cutting or pressing is known as unbound water. Whereas, water that cannot be extracted easily is termed as bound water. Now, think of some fruits and some vegetables where 
if you cut it you see water running if you press on it if you squeeze it you see the water run freely can you think of any foods like that awesome if you mention oranges uh, watermelon pineapples you are indeed correct no the water activity of a food is not the same thing as its moisture content although most foods are likely to have greater water activity than our dry foods this is not always so in fact a variety of food may have exactly the same moisture content and yet have different water activities right now for foods with a relatively high water activity correct refrigeration is always necessary now take for instance a slice of watermelon or slices of watermelon that right slices of watermelon can that watermelon remain in the temperature danger zone for for some time what will happen if you leave it out without refrigeration for a day what do you think will happen to the watermelon right so these foods will eventually deteriorate because the amount of water activity that is present is ideal for what? Ideal for the spoilage bacteria, right? So you may find out that these foods will go bad very easily. Therefore, refrigeration at the correct temperature is a must. Now, these include most fresh foods and many processed foods such as soft cheeses and also cured meat. However, many foods can be successfully stored at room temperature by proper control of the water activity. These foods can be described as semi-moist and include fruit cakes, puddings, and sweet sauces such as chocolate and caramel. When these foods spoil, it is usually the result of surface mold. Now, checkpoint. List five perishable and non-perishable foods. So you're supposed to list five perishable and five non-perishable foods. Explain the concept water activity in relation to food spoilage differentiate between the two groups of foods and we're referring to what is the difference between perishable foods and the difference between non-perishable foods right and the suitable storage for these types of food what is the ideal storage for perishable foods and what are the ideal storage for non perishable foods also you've made it to the end of the video don't forget to subscribe like and also share with persons who you know will find this video useful thank you for making it various tutorials